The Lion Inside by Rachel Bright and Jim Field. In a dry, dusty place where the sand sparkled gold stood a mighty flat rock, all craggy and old. And under that rock, in a tiny full house, lived the littlest, quietest, meekest brown mouse. He was so very tiny, so incredibly small, that nobody noticed him ever at all. Hello. Ouch. He got trod on and sat on and missed out for stuff. Ouch. Ignored and forgotten. Yes, mouse life was tough. Meanwhile, far above, on top, of the rock. Times were quite different. It was Lion O'Clock. This huge, toothsome creature made sure everyone saw how important he was by how loud he could roar. roar. He was head of the pack. He was shouty and tough. He loved showing the crowd he was made of strong stuff. stuff. Yes, all were impressed by this mighty king cat. If only, thought Mouse, I could be more like that. Then late, one dark night, in his mini mouse bed, the cleverest thought popped into his head. He jumped from the covers and held up a paw. I've got it, he said. What I need is a roar. I mean, what if this mouse, with the weeniest squeak, was a little more grrrr and a little less meek? Well, he'd still be the smallest of fuzzy brown mice, but he'd make friends and join in and life would be nice. Yes, thought the mouse. I must find out how. I will learn how to roar and I will learn, learn it now. now. But gulp, oh my gosh. There was only one beast who could teach him this thing, but might make him a feast. feast. It was time to be strong, take a chance after all. Forever was such a long time to feel small. So he made himself brave and he thought like a winner. winner. He settled for the top, hoping not to be dinner. It felt like the scariest thing he could do. But if you want things to change, you first have to change you. you. The further he climbed, the closer he got, got. to the slumbering lion reclining on top. top. Then at last, as he stood on his tippy toes, he found himself suddenly nose to nose. nose. Uh, um, gulp. Nose. Pardon me. Wake up, Mr. Lion. You've got company. Mm, squeak, Mr. Lion. What I've come for mm, is squeak. Do you think you could teach me your roar? A silence befell that twinkling plain. Lion opened his eyes and puffed out his mane. Time slowed right down. Why, it felt like a week. Then he opened his mouth and let out an eek. The lion was shaking, his paws all a fumble. He was backing away with a scrambling tumble. Don't hurt me, he whimpered. Oh, try to be nice. Well, my goodness, this lion was frightened of mice. Don't worry, Mouse peeped. I'm a friend, not a foe. Let's rock this together. We'll have fun, don't you know? That was a magical moment for sure, when Mouse didn't feel at all small anymore. He had found his true voice and learned to speak out. And for that, 
you don't need to roar or to shout. And from that day and always, the two were a pair. They both liked that rock better. Now that rock was to share. The mouse, while still little, felt big in his head. And lion, he still roared, but with laughter instead. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, that day they both, both learned that no matter your size, we all have a mouse and, and a lion inside. inside.